Uh, dear Rubaya Tusain, uh, welcome to uh, Flying Broom International Women's Film Festival. We are very happy uh, to have you, at least online. Thank uh, you for having me. I really wish that I could have been there in person, but, you know. In, um, in the future. We are the, very hopeful. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 Uh, we shall overcome the mm -hmm. pandemic uh, and uh, the patriarchy, mm -hmm. and then... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to have our uh, wonderful festivals. You know, um, uh, I'm sure our audience uh, will love Made in Bangladesh. It has already been shown on uh, other platforms in Turkey, but uh, the, the real audience of this film uh, will uh, will be found uh, in the uh, audience of the Flying Broom. You know, I, I had read one interview made with you in 2018, in which you said. I believe in a feminist intervention in cinema. And that sentence uh, stole my heart. Can we start from there and then uh, talk about first your feminist attitude in filmmaking? Um, that interview was actually with, I think, I believe it was with Danish Film Institute uh -huh. uh, in 2018. And what I mean uh, when I say a feminist intervention in cinema is Uh, you know, in by training, I have a undergraduate degree in women's studies, mm -hmm. and I have a background of working with women's rights organizations in Bangladesh. So I have really spent a big part of my life looking at women's condition in society and the great inequalities and violence that women face in not only in Bangladesh but globally. Uh, and you know, making film is my artistic choice. It's my artistic expression. And I bring my feminist politics in this expression. And if you look at the history of cinema, you'll see that uh, really majority of the filmmakers were men. Uh, mm -hmm. Women were objectified. Women were in front of the camera being told what to do, how to act, what to wear. And women always brought this erotic Screen. So women's body has always been very central in cinema. Um, but women's agency was missing. You know, I feel like women as directors, as storytellers, as critiques, as editors, as producers were really missing. And when I say feminist intervention in cinema, I mean that taking the power back and you know, standing behind the camera and really creating the world that I want to see. And also uh, representing women's lived experience on the screen. Because I believe often what we see on the screen does not reflect women's actual lived experiences. Yeah, it's very true. And I totally agree with you. And I'm always very happy when I see uh, women telling stories of other women from a feminist perspective, uh, which is the case also in Made in Bangladesh. Uh, it's a very important uh, fight uh, and struggle uh, to get their rights. Uh, in Made in Bangladesh, uh, we see uh, the both sides of this struggle. I mean, as workers, They try to, uh, you know, unionize themselves. And as women, uh, they try to uh, get equal pay for equal work and they need to be recognized. So how uh, did your, um, you know, um, this adventure with these women began? How did you meet them? How did you come up with the idea? Uh, the idea came out of my previous film, which was called Under Construction. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a character in the film who uh, works as a housemaid, but then later she leaves and joins the uh, ready-made apparel industry. And if you, uh, if you know of Bangladesh, you probably know that Bangladesh is the second largest exporter of ready-made garment apparels. And more than 80% of the workers in the sector are young women. Mm -hmm. um, so I really wanted to look at the life of these women who drive Bangladesh's economy. So my story, uh, that was the basic idea um, that I started off from. And then I went into uh, research where I actually started meeting workers. Mm -hmm. um, and when I started meeting actual workers, I discovered that many of them were involved in workers' union. Uh, many of them have 
uh, established workers union in their factories and improved the conditions. So this was a story of, again, women's agency. Mm -hmm. uh, so I about oppression and struggle, but how these young women are actually becoming active agents of change in their workplace for themselves. And, you know, there's also a story of solidarity and sisterhood there, uh, which I found very beautiful. And the story is based on an actual worker, um, Dalia Akhtar, who uh, was the union president mm -hmm. later on. And there are a lot of actual factory workers who also you see in the film, in the big scenes where you have a lot of workers, a lot of them are actually laid off workers. So we had, it was really a collaboration. I think they uh, heartily uh, wanted to get involved in the making of this film, right? Yes, they did. And actually we we'd had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And then they said that, you know, oh, making a film is also really hard work because when they watch it, you know, it's 93 minutes, but they were involved in the making. So now they also know how how a film crew works. So it was nice. So it's, it's very, uh, you know, um, let's say it's very illuminating to see these women fighting for their rights in solidarity. But the film is not bitter at all. You know, it reflects all the colors uh, of their souls. And, and I mean, uh, we, we see how... They fight with the patriarchy, the bureaucracy. They have marital problems, and you know, not to mention the economical uh, problems. But this whole situation turns into a celebration uh, for the women's rights. And uh, did you always have this tone in your mind when you wrote the script, or did it turn out uh, during the filmmaking? It's actually a very good question. Uh, I think it actually really. Uh, well, going into the film, my intention was not to show these women as victims. Mm -hmm. That was one thing I knew. Um, but as I got to know these women more, started to spend more time with them. Uh, like, for example, when we were rehearsing for months with our actors, Adalia was with us. Mm -hmm. You know, so we were spending days and months together, and I really get to see their lives day-to-day -day basis and I realized that these women are very young you know 23 24 and they have that young spirit uh, which is the spirit they like colorful clothes they like to sing they like to dance they fall in love they talk about romance Bollywood you know so they do all the things that young women do but they also take on this huge burden of capitalism and patriarchy. Um, but what what amused me, and I had so much respect for these women that it did not take their spirit away, you know? And I wanted to represent that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's a different type of strength. It's this feminine, very young feminine strength. Yeah, uh, because, you know, usually uh, in the uh, films which deal with uh, workers' rights, there's a bitterness, you know, and then there's a, there's a big uh, struggle and usually like date back to the first days of socialism and, you know, the men's interpretation uh, of this, uh, you know, um, uh, fight for rights become uh, immediately an ideology, something very serious and, you know, and, and then they have to have heroic acts and there has to be, you know, violence and resistance against violence. I mean, so that, that's why you can call them uh, even like um, worse than bitter films. You know, sometimes you have to respect them. They demand for respect. Here in Made in Bangladesh, you see everything. They have the respect uh, and then, but then you see the, this passion uh, which is burning inside these young women and they're aiming for a real happy future. That's what I feel about it. And uh, you did not, uh, you know, um, abstain from making the film more accessible uh, to uh, all audiences, I think. You know, and, and when like, um, I'm not saying it's a popular film, not at all, but like any, uh, you know, audience, who are only used to watching popular films can easily watch and enjoy this one. And it's a very difficult balance uh, to achieve. And how did you work on that? 
I don't, you know, I don't know if I consciously worked on that. I oh. think that that just may be my style because um, one of the thing is I felt that uh, this film kind of took shape on its own in many ways, you know, from scripting to rehearsing to filming and then editing, you know, it really had a life. And then when I, when we selected that song, Mm -hmm. um, the wedding song that kind of became the soul of the film you know and mm -hmm. it's very light it's it kind of invites you to join in um, and also something about celebrating these women you know celebrating these young women who are so beautiful and so powerful um, and they can inspire anybody you know I, I was inspired so for me the lightness I think came from that um, really and also to access the private moments of these women, you know, when they're with their friends, mm -hmm. you know, when they're gossiping or when they're talking about men or their sex life, you know. So these moments of joy um, were really constructed on set. You know, a lot of improvisation went into it. Um, and I think my actors really gave themselves uh, to the process, rehearsing for months, learning to operate the sewing machine and really interacting with actual workers. Um, so I think it was really a, a kind of an organic process. And I felt like there were so many women involved, like my DP, uh, sound engineer, production designer, editor, were all women. So it was that spirit kind of spontaneity and fun was also on the set. I think it re reflected on the screen mm -hmm. as well. That's lovely. But how about uh, the, uh, you know, production? Was it easy uh, to make this film in Bangladesh? It definitely was the most challenging film of all three features that I've made because of the scale of the film. I've never had to deal with a set. Uh, I think my I had about like 164 people at one point on the set, um, just actors that I had to direct, which was very, very challenging for me because I'd never done work on that scale before. Um, but having said that, I had a lot of time to prep. Uh -huh. um, you know, I had time to prep and rehearse with my DP on location with the actors and the actors were very, very well rehearsed. Uh, so when we're on set, things really moved. And I had a production crew who was very efficient in maintaining, um, dealing with the crowd because we we're shooting in all real location. That was another big challenge. That we're shooting in the, in the slum and using location sound. Okay. So we really had to work very hard. Um, and the whole slum community actually welcomed us. You know, they knew when we were filming, they would just like even hush the kids. Um, so we had support from the community. We had a lot of support from the workers. Uh, but nevertheless, I really thank my crew uh, to maintain peace and quiet so we could, we could really do the work. But it, it was very challenging and, you know, gaining permissions to shoot in certain places. We only had a few hours to do the filming and get out. Um, so, you know, there were various challenges, but I think um, the strong team kind of really helped me to get through. Mm -hmm. And the film had a, a big success in the international arena. Uh, and then uh, how about the people that uh, you were talking about? How did they react to the film when they watched it, the actual workers? How did they react? Well, I could show it to some of them, not all of them. Dahlia, of course, watched it. Um, she was with me in Paris and Denmark when we released the film uh, in 2019. And um, she was going to see the film for the first time in Denmark. And I was very nervous uh, because she hadn't seen the film. She was on the set and everything. But when she saw it, you know, she approved of it. For me, it was like, you know, that, okay, everything is okay, you know. And she said that, you know, I didn't realize that I had done something so heroic until I had seen the film. Uh -huh. um, and her friends who watched it, they just become so excited, you know. They, they can't believe that, oh, my God, it's a movie about us. And, you know, um, and I, in Bangladesh, you know, you probably are familiar with the fact that we have a censor board 
and a film has to pass through the censor board for us to release it in a theater. So we're really strategizing that what is the best way to bring this film forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that challenge is almost everywhere in the world, but um, mentioning, you know, Bangladesh, yes, I've been there uh, several times and it's really a country that stole my heart through the film festival, of course, and, and I know the kindness and politeness of the people. So when you were talking about like in the slums, they were even, you know, quieting the children, I can I imagine it's lovely. And you now stand out as one of the most important representatives of the contemporary Bangladesh cinema. So is that a big responsibility for you? Well, I don't know if I'm the most uh, prominent representative of Bangladesh. No, no, I mean, one of them, I said, one of them, I said. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Well, you know, I feel good that I'm a woman, you know? Yes, yes. I feel good that it's probably good for other young women. Because I think when there is a woman who uh, accomplishes something, she also makes way for other women. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, I feel good about occupying the space uh, as a female, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I also feel, you know, I think I feel more a responsibility towards creating mentorship program and things uh, to make way for other women, younger women directors, because I also see how I'm the very one of the very few women. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm mostly in a festival with like five other men directors. And, you know, so I want there to be more uh, women in the scene. And they're coming up, so I feel urgency to create mentorship programs and do work in, in that way also. Um, and it's, it's more comfortable because I think when I started off as a woman, I was questioned a lot. Uh, people did not respect me just because I was a woman. Uh, and that's over now. So that's, that's definitely more comfortable. Yeah, I see. Uh, well, it's the fate of uh, most of the women filmmakers all around the world. You have to prove yourself in order to earn that respect. But of course, each one of them earned that respect. Mm -hmm. And then now uh, all around the world, uh, there's a movement, you know, so that uh, this wonderful work of all the women are recognized in filmmaking. I mean, uh, we're trying hard to open up the space uh, for the women. And uh, once uh, th there is a uh, you know, opening and then all the women enter now, so that now you're a role model for many young uh, you know, uh, filmmakers in uh, Bangladesh and all around the world, of course. And uh, I think as a, a feminist, you know, showing that feminist attitude, you are another role model. Because I think it's very important to pronounce the word, even yes. to say yes. that. And how, how do you feel about that? Saying that I, yes, I am a feminist or uh, what do you think about this? But like you said, I think it's really important to pronounce the words feminism and patriarchy, you know? It's like there's a big elephant in the room and you don't want to acknowledge it. You mm -hmm. know, that uh, look at the number of women who are subjected to domestic violence all around the world. If you just look at that, you know there's a problem. You know, mm -hmm. women are being hurt by their intimate partners mostly. You know, there's a big problem there. Um, so, and if you look at women's history, some women had to give their lives for us to have the right to vote. The rights that we have today, we cannot take them for granted. We have them because somebody in the past had struggled for it. So I do believe in activism. You know, I believe that we have to work so the younger generation who will come after us will have a world that that will have more equality than what we have had. You know, I have had more opportunities than my mother and my mother had had more opportunities than her mother. You know, so I, I believe in that. You know, for me, that's why it's important to call myself a feminist and uh, to really talk about this. You know, by being a feminist, I mean, I look at the world with a gender sensitive lens, you know. You really have to look at the world with a gender sensitive lens because otherwise uh, patriarchy is so normalized in culture, even in religion, that we don't see it. It becomes transparent. Yeah. You know, so I, th I think it's, it's important that uh, as women, we name it, you know, 
the violence that we face and the aggression, the microaggressions that we face, we have to call it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how about your artistic approach as a filmmaker? How do you approach your projects? Um, I think for me, I'm really drawn to a story. I'm really drawn to characters. So I really like to create my characters and kind of see where they want to go. And I also love to work within a particular space. You know, the atmosphere is very important for me. Uh, I like creating like a real atmosphere where you almost feel like you can sense it and smell it and, and be there. Uh, and I, I love also working with colors. Colors become very important for me. So when, I, when it's very early on in a project, uh, when I don't even have a story, I just have a concept. Um, I usually have a song. Uh. I usually have a song is kind of the heart and soul of the film and it kind of drives me and I listen to it when I write and uh, I think about colors. Um, sometimes I think, think about like senses or seasons. Uh, so I take inspiration from those things. And then like for Made in Bangladesh, I was thinking about a lot about rickshaw painting, you mm. know, um, which is saturated and bright um, and a lot of darkness. So darkness and this uh, burst of bright light, you know, that's the kind of thing that I had in my mind. And I had that song, you know, so these things kind of uh, help me to start off in the beginning. And then as I get into scripting, it's more like, you know, the narrative structure or the dramatic structure. But even before that, I like to play around with those like colors and sounds and atmospheric elements. Mm -hmm. And then how do you behave on the set? Do you get like nervous? Do you easily get angry or are you like calm and uh, happy, easy going? How are you on the set? Well, I think I'm very happy on the set. I think it's one of the, I always say that um, in the kitchen and on the set, I'm very comfortable because I know what I'm doing. I feel like I'm in my natural habitat. Um, <laughs> I really feel like I'm in my natural habitat when I'm on the set. I really feel confident, like I know what I want to do. I really know what I want. Um, but sometimes I I cry, <laughs> you know, if I get too angry, I'd cry. Um, or sometimes I'd get nervous. Sometimes I, I screamed a lot. Sometimes in Made in Bangladesh, especially with the crowd, with the crowd control, I'd scream a lot. But in general, I think I'm very happy because I'm very happy around my actors. I'm very happy around my team. I draw a lot of strength from uh, the other women. Like for Made in Bangladesh, my DP was um, this woman, uh, Sabine Nasla. Mm -hmm. She's French and she's, you know, she's worked with Chantal Ackerman and she's coming from the generation. So I was just very happy to be around her on the set and, you know, my actors too. Yeah. So the, the female gaze, uh, you know, they, having a woman behind the camera, it makes a big difference, right? I think so. I, I would I would think so, yes. Yeah. So do you, uh, will you continue working uh, with mainly female crews? Would you like that if you have the chance? Yes. But, mm -hmm. you know, having said that, I, I have also really enjoyed very good creative collaboration with men. You know, the male crews that I have collaborated with, my producers or my sound designer, editor, music composer, had really a very wonderful and fulfilling, um, uh, you know, collaboration with them. So I wouldn't be like opposed to working with a male DP or anything. Mm -hmm. But because also the topic of my film is so female centric, mm -hmm. you know, I think it creates a different type of energy. And also, you know, in Bangladesh, where the almost all of the film crews are mostly male. Uh, this is what I saw in my first film that I'm being outnumbered in my own crew. I'm kind of the only woman in my own crew and I do not want that. There should be gender balance. That's why I like to put women as head of departments in other head of departments. So my overall crew has a better idea of gender balance, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's very important, I think, to, uh, because, you know, when you make a crew and you make a film, you become very close, more than a family. You're spending days together. So it's important to have a comfortable atmosphere for me 
and that is comfortable when there's a balance you know i also don't want to have a crew where it's all women and no men at all uh, but what i try to create is a, is a good balance you know Oh, great. Yeah. Um, if you don't, then I would like to come back to the uh, socio-economical uh, positioning of the film, of course. Um, we know that Bangladesh is not a rich country, but it's growing. The economy is growing. And I don't know if you should say it's fortunately or unfortunately, but the, you know, the ready-made industry, the textile industry is a very important part of it. But it has its, uh, you know, side effects like uh, the pollution in the rivers, for example. It's because of the uh, you know chemical dyes they use for the clothings and and uh, you know and there, there are other side effects of course i think environment is uh, one of them an important one of them and also the social change it brings so i mean um i never ever saw bangladesh as a very typical uh, you know traditional patriarchal society in fact i don't know i always see the power in the women maybe it's because all these lovely colorful dresses and this uh, you know beauty softness which brings out the energy inside of them but uh, now it, maybe women will have more power uh, in the society and it will threaten the women but having said that, you also have a female president, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, these, uh, you know, very superficial analysis I'm trying to make only by visiting a country for a few times uh, is already like, uh, is interesting. But how do you see Bangladesh now? With a growing economy, which has a lot of side effects and there's a struggle and the, you know, gender balance is uh, changing. Uh, how do you see the future? I'm very hopeful about the future, um, but you know, Bangladesh is a is a very fast moving economy now, mm -hmm. and there are always collateral damages in these type of economic growths. You know, when when you have these big development models, you also sacrifice part of the population. Sometimes mm -hmm. you displace them, you know, or uh, they become collateral damage in an industrial growth or their environmental issues, that's definitely there. But having said that, there is a lot of power in Bangladesh youth. I see that young men and women, both. Um, and that's why I want to work with young young people, you know, in, in creating more space for filmmaking and gender sensitive filmmaking. And in general, having a woman head of state uh, for so many years, I think has overall changed, you know, even a little bit the mindset of people that yes, women can be in positions of authority. And it is under this leadership of this woman prime minister that Bangladesh is really soaring to great economic growth, right? Mm -hmm. um, so she's done better than any male leaders in the past. So I'm sure that creates some impact. And also she's put women in powerful positions in the military, in the parliament, um, but that also creates backlash. You know, when women become more educated, when women make more money, there's also a rise in uh, domestic violence. There's also a rise in rape, you know? So I think uh, women in Bangladesh have to be more vigilant than ever because they have a lot of opportunities now, but this is also the time to really find out what is it that they really want as women because feminism is also being hijacked by the corporate culture, you know, women's day and girl power and this and that. So trying to sift through, uh, you know, trying to sift through all the logos and, and you know, um, all these uh, corporate social responsibilities, trying to find out like who they are as women, you know. Mm -hmm. I see your point. Yeah, you're right. So um, finally, I would like to ask you about your next project, if you're allowed to talk about mm -hmm. it. Well, I'm always, uh, always hopeful for our next project, but, you know, making films like this is very hard because you have to write, of course, you have to write and then you have to raise the funds, which is the toughest part, right? And I'm um, applying to different grants and things like that. And right now I'm actually in the process of scripting. Um, I'm scripting a film that's again set in Bangladesh. Um, and this has more to do with women's pleasure and their right to their own bodies um, and also researching about a sort of a sequel for Made in Bangladesh, which focuses on 
Bangladeshi women migrant workers who go to Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. or Jordan to work in apparel factories or in Saudi Arabia as domestic workers. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what I'm kind of working on. And I also serve on the board of women and in film and television. So I'm trying to do a little bit of work there as well. Uh, you know, trying to create more mentorship opportunities for women in Bangladesh. Wonderful. I mean, the project is very promising and very exciting. And then you're doing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, good work for the women of Bangladesh, all of them, not only in the uh, film industry. So I wish you courage, good luck. And thank you so much uh, for being a guest, at least online. So next time, hoping to, uh, you know, host you in Turkey, in Ankara at the festival. I would love that. And I send my greetings to everyone at the festival and to all the wonderful audiences. And I really hope that one day I can visit you in person. Thank you. Thank you.